This is Arctostaphylos emerald carpet. And this is a good example of how to use this plant. Um, they've got these from one gallon containers. It looks like they're about 30 inches to three feet on center, which is how I use them as well. This planting here is about three to four years old which tells me um, they're, they're going kind of tight on the water, which is a smart thing, and um, probably deep and frequent water is the way to establish these. They do become drought resistant, um, but I'll tell you, they still look better with a little water on them. So kind of dial that in when you have the ability to, but um, you can certainly cut the water way back on these. I've never seen them totally cut off. I, I, I suspect they'll be okay, but then they're going to go native on you, <laughs> to, which to me means they're going to behave more like they would in nature, and part of the plant's going to die, and you're going to get woody bits and things like that. Um, if you can find this plant, if you put it in a narrow area, and they have to start um, if they if they run out of room you're gonna see this pile up really fast I've got it in a narrow area in my my yard I'll try to include that and um, they're they're probably the same age as this plant right here but mine are probably 12 inches tall or more because they start pushing upward when they can't go outward so I recommend using that more in open areas like this where they're not confined and they're not bumping up against other shrubs. Otherwise, I think you're going to get a lot of lift and uh, a much taller plant. Uh, the other thing is water. Now, I, used to, I was told years ago that Arctostaphylos don't like overhead water. This area you're looking at has been overhead watered and I used to always put these on drip and I did not have good results from that. Um, the plant never spread out as much as it could and the first time I put it on spray they spread out and looked the way you see here. So I recommend spraying, irrigating these. Even if you do spray irrigate them, it's a more efficient way to distribute the water. You're going to get root, um, you're going to get stems that root so you get better erosion control and also um, it's just going to get a happier plant because there'll be moisture consistently distributed throughout and um, you can still drive the roots down deeper and it's still a drought resistant plant. You're just going to get better coverage and a, a nice look like you see here. Um, the foliage on these is really nice. Uh, also I'd say something to be aware of is these have a beautiful white flower in the spring. I'll, uh, I'll include f uh, pictures of that but um, just a good looking plant overall. Now here's the downside. Um, I've seen older plantings that start to get wood underneath the plant and look uh, and not look so great. I'm seeing a little bit of it right here. You see how you're getting a little die back and that's right at the crown where the plant was planted. So that's some of the older wood. Now I'm not sure what's causing that, but I have seen that in older plantings. And I guess I'd give you a little caution on that one is, uh, see it's happening right here too, where the wood is not leafing out as well. It's not as vigorous as the perimeter. And um, I've definitely seen older plantings where these got quite woody and the client wanted them removed because of the general appearance was not near as nice as what you're looking at. And that's something to think about. You know, a lot of plants that are more native uh, in nature do not have really long life cycles. That's one of the reasons I don't use very many California natives is because they're not long lived. And as a designer, uh, I don't want people to be having to replace parts of their landscape every <clears throat> three to ten years I want to use the longest solution I longest lived solution I can so I would tell you that um, I, I don't go crazy with this plant the way it's been used in a big mass here uh, too often because I'm a little concerned about the longevity from what I've seen in the past so just keep that in mind when you're thinking about using this plant is if it did start to go downhill after you know five to ten years uh, how would I deal with that and would replacing that be a huge headache 
and if so, uh, is that something I should do in terms of using this plant? But uh, I think it's a really nice ground cover, low water, drought resistant. Um, by the way, the deer usually leave this alone. Uh, I have seen in severe situations where the deer trimmed this down, didn't want to let it get going, and then once they were through their rough period at the end of fall, uh, they let it grow. So it's not 100% deer resistant, but it's quite deer resistant. And that is Arctostaphylos emerald carpet. So here's Arctostaphylos emerald carpet in a tight area, and you can see what it's doing. Looks a lot different than the other planting shot that you saw, and um, it's because it's run out of room. When these were younger, they were flat like the other shot you see down here. And also, there's the dead stuff I was warning you off of. See how the dead undergrowth, you see this? So as they get older and if they start bunching up, this is what you got to concern yourself with <coughs> is um, whatever's not getting light anymore starts to die back. And uh, that's just the nature of that plant. So give them the space they need or uh, this is the potential situation. This planting right here, by the way, is nine years old, so it's not doing badly. Um, and it gets a fair amount of water because it's next to a lawn. But because that's been cut back a number of times, it's not looking as good as the rest of the plant. And uh, as I said, it gets much taller when it starts to run out of room. So I like to give this plant uh, uh, at least four to five feet in spread uh, to avoid this issue. 